I am fortunate enough to have been handed down from my dad this Rolex Submariner date reference 16610. Now there are a few fans around the world of this brand, and especially around the world of watch YouTube, with the most recent appearance in the cultural zeitgeist being Shakira claiming by analogy that her ex-partner PK had traded in a Rolex for a Casio. Now her hips don't lie, but in this case they may be mistaken in relying on the assumption for that comparison that Casio is a brand of less worth, because for those that have watched my other video on the topic, there is a lot to be said for Casio being a brand that can trump Rolex on many different fronts. This got me thinking, if I did trade in my Rolex for a Casio, and maybe some other excellent digitals, what would I get, and why? Well this video is the result of my thinking on that question, and no, I wouldn't just buy a thousand F91Ws from Argos. Let me know what you would get. Now to be clear, this is definitely not me latching onto a recent trend, for a video I was already planning on my favourite digital watches, whoever told you that was an absolute liar. First, for long time viewers it would be no surprise that a mint condition Casio Cosmophase in metal all the way from 1989 would be on my list. You'll likely be out of pocket at least $400 or so for one of these, but what do you get? Well this is a first of its kind watch and with no real modern equivalent. It's the culmination of the tradition of astronomy that predates horology, namely provision of details on the relative positioning of the planets. It's the inheritor of the tradition of the noble orrery, a favourite interest of some of the most significant innovators in clocks like George Graham, and can provide you with a view of the orbital patterns of the planets from 1901 to 2200. I also believe it was the watch worn by Jake Gyllenhaal in Donnie Darko, so it has some cult film buff appeal too. That's me with one icon of watch history with around 4% of the budget spent from selling my Rolex to Mariner. What's next? Well I would venture from Casio and go over to the Rolex arch nemesis Omega and get myself the legendary Omega X33 first generation with both analogue and digital display. This is the go-to watch of astronauts and pilots the world over. Growing out of the design of awesome watches like the 1986 Seamaster Polaris multifunction and some initial prototypes of more standard looking digitals for space, the X33 delivered on specs provided by Tom Stafford, who'd been to space in 1965 on Gemini 6A, 1966 on Gemini 9, and into lunar orbit on the Snoopy lunar module from Apollo 10, the same guy who wrote the specs for the B-2 bomber. These included cool things like mission time, only beaten in coolness by the recent Mars timer, and the crazy loud alarm that could be heard in flight. Original prototypes were tested from 1996 in space by the likes of Richard Linehan and Cosmohort's Victor Avanasiev, and there's the amazing story of a pilot who crashed a plane wearing his prototype X33, and in hospital was given back the still working watch by the nurse, which is now in an Omega museum. You'll likely be out of pocket at least $2,000 for a nice condition one of these, but we've got another milestone in watch and space history, and still plenty of budget still to go. What's next? Well, it has to be a variant of the Seiko A829 watch, the Rotocall, which was worn by Owen Garriott, the astronaut father of Richard Garriott, aka Lord British, that developed the Ultimate Game series. It was the world's most vertical watch going to the depths of Challenger Deep and the heights of space on STS-41 and STS-31 on the wrist of Cathy Sullivan and many other astronauts. The Submariner has its diving timer bezel, but the Rotocall lets you change functions using the rotary switch feature in the bezel available in black and red, blue and grey, and yellow and black. My channel colours, I have to get one. We've got three out of this world watches already, so let's add a fourth, one of the pioneers Timex Datalink range, the result of a deal in 1994 with Microsoft. Cool fact, on the strap of the Datalink 50 model 70301, written in ASCII 24, it reads, listen to the light if you can see, beat that oyster bracelet. This alludes to the cool technology where an optical sensor in the watch was able to receive data from your computer's CRT monitor. The watch was certified for spaceflight, and variants of the watch were worn by the likes of Daniel Barry on the STS-72 Endeavour and STS-96 Discovery, James Newman on the STS-88, Yuri Gidzenko, the commander of the Expedition 1 Soyuz, Mikhail Churin, and Sergei Krikalev on the Expedition 1. A good use of around $300 or so I think, and still plenty of budget to spend. Let's get out of space and get back to the domain of the Rolex Submariner, the Diver Watch, or as my fourth watch is sometimes called, an Air Diver. Now this isn't someone diving out of a plane and into the sea, but rather a diver using air underwater. This is the Citizen Hyper Aqualand, which can be yours for around $300 or so. Now the Submariner wasn't the first diving watch, that was the Blank Pan 50 Fathoms, but the Hyper Aqualand was the world's first diving watch with depth display that transferred information to a PC via a cable and automatically read temperature every five minutes. Citizen were 
real innovators in this field and developed another candidate for this list, the C0023 from 1985, the first watch of an electronic digital depth gauge, and the Cyber Aqualand starts to get a bit too advanced for me, so the Hyper Aqualand is in the sweet spot. Fifth, we come up from the depths and onto the water. We can't afford a Yachtmaster with our leftover budget, so it's going to have to be the 1981 Memo Sail, the digital version of Swiss Movement House, Ebouchet Electronic Marines brand Memo Time, and one of their last hurrahs, containing a chip especially designed to support the regatta function with four disappearing balls. This is my most recent acquisition, and I've never been on a yacht in my life, but it's so cool. I doubt you'll end up in a Paul Thorpe video if you wore one of these in London, unlike with a Submariner. Not many of these are out, but you see them on eBay for anywhere between 500 to 800 US dollars, so let's take that out of the pot. Six, we're going to need something dressy so that we can cover all of the bases, and the no-brainer here for me is another watch from 1981, the unique Omega Equinox, the world's first reversible watch with both an analog and digital face. The digital equivalent of a JLC Reverso with a bracelet aesthetic that you might see on a 70s Gerald Genta designed steel sports watch. And that leaves us with a final big hitter to use up the remaining budget, with my choice being the awesome Hoyer Chrono Split, probably hitting your budget for around 2,500 USD or more, the world's first quartz wrist chronograph with a double digital display with LCD and LED from 1975, worn by multiple Formula 1 drivers. No Twingos in sight here. I may go for the double LCD display references as I hear the early ones with LED are tricky to keep in good working order. With the leftover change we can get a fresh Casio F91W or W59, Casio G-Shock M5610 and 6900, a vintage Timex Ironman Triathlon and Atlantis just to make sure you've got all the classics covered and I could maybe even persuaded to blow the rest on a vintage Citizen Christron calculator watch. So for the cost of one Submariner, we can have four space icons, a world's first diving watch, a slice of Swiss digital history for our yacht, an elegant JLC Reverse OS dress digital from a luxury Swiss brand, a pioneer in chronographs and racing prestige, and some other classics, or even a world's first classic calculator watch. Very tempting. I have to say, it's very seductive to think about all the awesome digitals on my grail list I could get if I were to sacrifice the sub, but I'll stay disciplined and save up the money to complete my own collection, as it means a lot to me after being passed down to me from my dad. So I won't be trading my Rolex for a Casio, but the idea is not as unbelievable as it sounds. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then you may enjoy my deeper dive on the comparative histories between Rolex and Casio here. Let me know what watches you would get if you were to trade in a Rolex in the comments. <laughs>